Hello everybody, this is BeastCat100 and welcome back to some more Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Extend. In the previous episode, we had completed Relius' story. And it really turned out the way that you would expect it to. He's just... He's an observer, you know? He has ambition he wants to create, but all in all, he's an observer. He wasn't really too impressed by Hazuma's exploits. But we're going to change gears and head over to Makoto's story. Sorry. I'm just very confused because there are four sections for her. So I don't know if there are two different possible outcomes for the true ending or what. But we're just going to do this the way that we always do this and kind of play it by ear. So, if you like what you see, leave a like down below, comment if you have anything to say, subscribe to me if you haven't already, click that bell so you're notified of everything that I do when I do it, and share with your friends so they can join in on this adventure. Let's begin Makoto Nania's story. Slight Hope. Lieutenant Makoto Nania, Novus Orbis Librarium Intelligence. You are to investigate the mysterious energy emanating from Ibu uh, from the Ibukido ruins. Late, oh, late a part of the rebellious city of Ikaruga. Having received her orders from NOL headquarters, Makoto begins her journey to the fifth hierarchical city of Ibuku Ibukido. I haven't been to Ibukido since it happened. Probably hasn't changed much since then, though. I mean, it's not like these ruins are gonna get more, uh, ruiny. The city was reduced to little more than rubble and ash five years ago, the victim of a mysterious explosion. People are working hard to restore what's left, but it's tough making some tough to make something out of nothing, and they've precious little to work with. Ugh. I know for a fact that the NOL's got outposts around here. Why didn't they just have a scout check it out? Eh, I should quit bitching. A job's a job. Can't help out the family just sitting on my tail. I guess. Although the NOL ups oh, God damn it. ostensibly rules the ruins and the city alike, the branch in charge of overseeing Ibukido proper has gone native to a degree. There's been friction between them and HQ, and they resent having to take their marching orders from superiors so far removed from the beleaguered town's day-to-day -day reality. The intelligence division is keeping the, this investigation off the books, lest the local branch consider it more unwan unwarranted, unwarranted meddling. Their relationship with headquarters started souring the moment they were put in charge of this place. I know House Mutsuki is the most powerful family in the Duodecim, but still, who in their right mind starts mouthing off to the NOL? I think I'm getting close. Makoto slowly makes her way into the library branch, secreted away, secreted, secreted away amid the lowest depths of Ibukido. A large cauldron resides in its basement, safe and out of sight, as is the case with all important NOL facilities. The gates leading to this one, however, have been sealed shut. The message is clear: keep away. Let's see. File says, five years ago. After the destruction of Ibukido, the cauldron gates were closed and sealed so that Seether should not seep into our world. Yup, looks that way to me. Okay, so that energy source I'm supposed to check out should be down here somewhere. Sorry. Uh, Mikoto consults the, the small device in her hands. There are tiny spikes, trace levels of Seether, maybe, or energy leaking out from the Unseen Cauldron. Nothing worth looking into, though. Now that's strange. Huh? 
Dakota sc scans the area. Her gaze lands. Scans the area. Her gaze lands upon. Uh, lands upon a crumbled stretch of wall in the corner, almost out of sight. She sees what looks to be. Mm. She sees what looks like a bit of discolored rubble amid the unif uniformity of the broken wall. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble speaking today, uh, but something about it seems different. She slowly makes her way to it, as though guided by an unseen hand. Hey, this is a piece of a door, and that means... Aha! She pulls the door aside to reveal a long, obscured passageway. Alright! Stupid friggin' door! Get out of my way! Squirrel power for the win! Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> the way that she supposedly made a crater when in that little um, conflict with Carl, I don't think a door is going to get in your way. Proud of her door wrangling efforts, Makoto steps in steps through the doorway she's just cleared. But at that moment <coughs> What's up with this place? The seats are so <coughs> damn thick. Still coughing, Makoto casts an Ars Magus upon herself. A defense spell to protect her from the Seether's effects. She starts down the corridor again, able to breathe this time. It is dark. The floor beneath is angled down, slightly, leading her further into the earth. Before long, though... Huh? The path empties into a large chamber, not that different from the one w from which Makoto had just come. Except this time, the cauldron loomed over her, dominating her view and filling her mind with awe. Whoa! I can't believe there's one of these sitting in each NOL branch. She has seen cauldrons before, but never from so close. Usually, the control room overlooking the cauldron chamber was as near to to one person. Uh, Usually the control room overlooking the cauldron chamber was as near to one per to one was as near to one as a person was permitted. Getting any closer would be unwise. Makoto's eyes drift up to that very room, a room that would have been stuffed with scientists and monitoring monitoring equipment were the site still in use. I'm gonna check it out. Control room has seen better days. A thick pattern of of dust c covers the electronics, and cobwebs hang down in drunken arcs. No way! This terminal still has juice! Maybe I can dig up some useful data! Access restricted, huh? We'll see about that. File number 5378921. Third attempt to make contact with the boundary via prime field device number 12. This is dated the same day that Ibukido was destroyed. There were experiments going on down here? Really? Interesting. If this is the place that I think it is, then that explosion took place a lot sooner than I thought. In Calamity Trigger, the whole experiment that resulted in the explosion. I believe this was the place that it happened. Because they're talking about Prime Field Device 12, which is Noelle as we now know. And we saw her amidst the rubble of that explosion. Interesting. No such records exist in the Intelligence Division's records. Taylor twitch with excitement, Makoto scurries from terminal to terminal, trying to gather as much data as she can. Busted. This one too! At this rate, I'm not even gonna know who was here that day, never mind what they were actually up to. Still, what are the odds I stumble onto data that even the Intelligence Brainiacs don't have? 
How come nobody here deleted it when everything went to hell? Oh, 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 this one still works. Wait. This file directory. Is this thing linked to... The cauldron? Makoto gazes down through the grimy glass of the cauldron below. It's girth easier to comprehend at this distance. This terminal is connected to the cauldron and still collecting data from it, even now. Whoa! What the? Why'd that file open on its own? Let's see. The 12th Prime Field device, designed by Relius Clover. Wait. Do they mean Colonel Clover from Experimental R&D? This image looks familiar. Let me zoom in. Oh, Makoto's gonna... Is this a joke or something? Yep. The 12th Prime Field device is Noel? hand to her head and looks around, barely awake. <sighs> her surroundings are familiar, but it still takes a mo her a moment to give them context. She is inside an NOL R's Magus vessel, currently mid-flight judging from the constant little rumble she feels and hears. Hmm. Weird. My memory's all... fuzzy. Last thing I remember, I was checking out the Ibukido ruins. And then I heard through the intel grapevine that Tsubaki had received a classified mission from HQ2 and was heading to Kagutsuchi. And one of our guys gave me a disc that I'm supposed to pass off to Sector 7. The disc safe sat within her uniform's inner pocket. The password is... Um... Oh yeah. New. That's right. She's heading to Kagutsuchi for a top-secret mission of her own. <laughs> if Tsubaki were here right now, she'd be giving me such shit for sleeping in the middle of a top-secret assignment. Never mind, I'm stuck on an airship and can't do crap anyway. Eh, I don't think she would, considering she also dozed off on the flight here. <laughs> That'd be typical Tsubaki. Tsubaki's a member of the Zero Squadron. The Wings of Justice, they like to call themselves. But if she's heading to Kagutsuchi, that means... Noelle and Jin are involved, huh? Actually, I wonder... And the game might prove me wrong, regardless, but... I, we now know that Hazuma messed with Jin's memories. Um, back at, a um, Ikaruga. So I wonder if he did the same thing with Makoto. I had a bad feeling about all this. I wish I could just talk to him first. Figure out what the hell they're up to. Maybe I could get it all hashed out and tell Tsubaki she can just go home instead of... of whatever she's been sent to do. Her hand strays to the pocket containing the disc. Safe and sound. She knows this isn't the last time she'll feel for it. The 13th Hierarchical City, Kagutsuchi. And the Ars Magus vessel docks amid down a downpour. There Makoto stands, alone in the desolate port. The rain plasters her black poncho to her body. I'd better start with Noelle. Wherever she is, I'm betting she's crying. Oh, hey, Wait, Jin. Speaking that... of... Jin Kisaragi? I'd better go after him. Major Kisaragi! Huh? Wait, I know you. 
You're... Makoto Nanaya. We were in the same class at the Academy, remember? Sabaki's friend, right. You did look familiar just now. Hey, he's sounding kind of normal. Not that I believe that's going to stay the case for long. His face is pale. And I smell blood. Oh my god, you're hurt! Major, what happened to you? It's fine, I'm fine. You needn't worry yourself. Oh yes, I... Uh, need? Come on, we were classmates! I'm familiar with that black uniform you wear. What do you spies want with... <sighs> Try to stay still, okay? Look, I can understand them not being your favorite people, but I'm not talking to you as intel right now. I'm Makoto, and Makoto's not gonna leave you here in a bloody heap. <sighs> you need treatment, and fast. If you don't want to go to the Librarium sick ward, I'll take you to a local Kagetsuchi clinic. I'd say live dangerously, but it looks like you already have been. <laughs> you never change, do you? You're still very much yourself. Aren't you? Going to the NOL for help would be a bit counterproductive at this point. Do you mind helping me to a clinic then? Preferably one down amid the lower levels. Good. Of course I don't. All right. Easy does it then. Oh boy. Oh, by the way, you haven't seen Noel anywhere, have you? Makoto, no! You're an elusive one, Major Kisaragi. Mm. We set you up all nice and comfy in the NOL medical ward, and you just hobble out? Not gonna lie, it smacks of ingratitude. Hey, Ozma. Ozma, you bastard! Temper, temper, Major. Or are you really thinking of crossing blades with me? You're already bleeding so freely. I wouldn't be able to tell if I scored a hit. You cocky Whoa, son of a bitch. Well, hello, Lieutenant. Been eavesdropping long? Long enough. What's going on here, Captain Hazama? How can you point your weapon at a wounded man like that? You should run along now. You're in my way. Oh? So you're of a mind to interfere? Have you lost your mind? Hey, whoa! Why are you attacking him? Okay. Palette swap much. This is more the Makoto that I'm used to seeing. But okay, that was a To kill him? Duh! Did you really have to ask? Or were you just being rhetorical and melodramatic? Get out of here, Makoto! I'm the one he's after! The hell I will. You know, Hazuma, I've always thought there was something off about you. I'm dedicating this first punch to women's intuition. Oh. Oh, I see. This is another one of those reverse things. Okay, this is not what I was planning on doing. Rebel. One. Action. Okay, so <laughs> this is not what I was planning. Um, obviously, as you, if you've been here with the series long enough, you know I usually go for the gag ending first, get that out of the way. But this is, I, I guess this is another one of those situations where you have to go through the story first in order to, um, go through the gag, like get to the gag ending. So. This is going to be another Jin situation where we're going to be going through to the true ending first, and then we're going to be heading to the um, the gag ending, which is going to throw me off a bit. But ugh. shit. No, no, this can definitely still work. This will. This will still work. So, not the true ending, but the bad ending. We'll be we'll be heading towards that. We won't be getting to it today. But this is just an introductory uh, episode, anyway. Sorry, I had to <laughs> I had to to talk myself through this because this this kind of uh, threw me for a loop. All right, uh, let's give this a shot. Oh, 
Too scary. Nice dodge. Ow. Frame rate, can you please stay constant for a second so I can actually fight? I really do like she's just like a boxer. Whoa! <laughs> Wait, what happened? Oh well. Yes, you lost, Hazuma. Fuck off. Impressive. Surprisingly so. Suddenly, Colonel Clover's interest in you seems much less random and untoward, shall we say. Jin. And Tsubaki. And Noel, too. What do you plan on doing to them all? Noel? Are you referring to Noel Vermilion by any chance? Of course! Who else would I be talking about? Who the hell are you? <gasps> that murderous look on his face! Why can't I move my feet? Hazama and Jin lock eyes for a moment, each, each daring the other to make the first move. Jin suddenly obliges, slicing a pillar out of ice with his Yuki Anasa. Jin! Ah, quickly, Lieutenant! Huh? Ah! Jin scoops up the confused Makoto into his arms and runs away from the temporarily immobilized Hazama as fast as his feet will carry them. All Hazma can do is watch them through the cracks of the ice and grind his teeth. She called her Noel. Who the hell is that damn squirrel? Hmm. I'll leave her for Relius. I'm sure he'd like that. He'd like that? Good. <laughs> Good there. Good there, game. Fight your friends. Okay. <laughs> Well then, this was a sudden change from what I expected, but hey, a little surprise isn't necessarily bad every once in a while. Mm. But it is interesting, the fact that calling her Noel for some reason tripped Hazma up. Uh, guess we'll have to find that out for later. Uh, enough rambling. I'm going to wrap it up here. In the next episode... We're going to switch gears once again and head for the bad ending for Makoto's story. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Yep, yep. So, thank you guys for watching. And see you guys later.